Hi everyone, it's Professor Primerton, and in this video we're going to finish up our discussion on trigonometry of right triangles. So in the previous video we talked about how to use right triangles to evaluate trigonometric functions. We also talked about the function values of the trigonometric functions for 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. We also found out that cofunctions of complementary angles are equal, and we also used the definitions of trigonometric functions for any angle. In this video we're going to talk about how to use right triangle trigonometry to solve applied problems. So applications of trigonometry of right triangles. If you want to solve a triangle, we need to determine the measure of all three angles and the lengths of all three sides that are forming the triangle from the information that's given in the problem. So in example four, we're going to solve a right triangle. So solve the following right triangle by finding the lengths of the missing sides and the missing angle. So we have this right triangle. We have the side that's opposite the right angle. The hypotenuse has length 12. And we have that the angle A has 30 degree measure. However, we don't know anything about the angle B and we don't have any information about the length of side A or the length of side B. So we need to find out what is the length of side A and B and also the measure of angle B. So notice that angle A and angle B, they're complementary angles because you already have a 90 degree angle formed in this right triangle and the sum of all the interior angles in a triangle must equal 180 degrees. So if you have 90 degrees and 30 degrees, that means that the angle B must be equal to 60 degrees because if you add A and B, it must be equal to 90 degrees and you can solve for the measure of angle B by subtracting 30 degrees on both sides of the equation from 90 degrees and so the measure of angle B must be 60 degrees. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle in this case. So we found out all three angles in the right triangle. Now we're going to find out the values of side A and side B's length. So we're going to use the trigonometric ratios for the right triangle now. So if we know sine of 30 degrees, it's the opposite divided by hypotenuse length. So sine of 30 would be opposite would be A divided by hypotenuse length is 12. So sine of 30 degrees can be a ratio, A divided by 12, and if you multiply both sides of the equation by 12, you can isolate A on one side of the equation. So A is equal to sine of 30 degrees times 12 for the denominator, which is the LCD, and so A is equal to 12 times sine of 30 degrees, and that is equal to 6, because the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half. So 12 times a half will give you 6. And now we only have the length of side B to find out, and so if side B is to be used, we can also use 30 degrees for it as well, because the adjacent side would be B for 30 degree angle, and we also have 12 as the length of the hypotenuse. So we can use cosine of 30 degrees, which is the adjacent side divided by hypotenuse, to set up the ratio of cosine of 30 degrees is B divided by 12. And again, if you multiply both sides of the equation by 12, you can isolate B on one side of the equation. So B is equal to 12 times cosine of 30 degrees. And if you remember from the last video, cosine of 30 degrees is squared 3 divided by 2. And so 12 times cosine of 30 degrees will be 12 times squared 3 divided by 2, which the 12 divided by 2 would just become 6. And so B is equal to 6 times squared 3. And so we found out the length of side A, the length of side B, and we also found out the measure of angle B for this right triangle. So we've solved the triangle. We have all three sides lengths, and we also have the measure of all three angles inside the triangle. So as we just found out, you can actually use trigonometric ratios to find out the length of missing sides. The following figure shows that if you know the hypotenuse is length R and the acute angle theta in the right triangle, then the legs A and B, or the sides A and B, can be expressed as follows. If you want to get A by itself, and A is the opposite side from angle theta, and you know what the value of R is, the length of the hypotenuse, then you can take A is equal to R times sine theta, just like we did in the last example, to isolate the A by itself. You can multiply both sides of the equation by R, and so A is equal to R times sine theta. And for the same reason, since B is the adjacent side to this angle theta, you can use the cosine function, because cosine of theta would be adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and so cosine of theta would be B divided by R, and if you multiply both sides of the equation by r, you can solve for b and get it by itself on one side of the equation, and b is equal to r times cosine theta. And so sine of theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse. You get a divided by r, and if you multiply both sides of the equation by r, you get the equation a is equal to r times sine theta. And again, cosine of theta is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. You get b divided by r, and if you multiply both sides of the equation by r, b will give you r times cosine theta. The ability to solve right triangles by using trigonometric ratios is fundamental to many of the problems in navigation, surveying, astronomy, and also measurements of distances. The applications that we're going to consider in the next few examples will involve using the trigonometric ratios of right triangles. However, we're also going to discuss some terminology. So the terminology that we need to talk about is what's called line of sight, angle of elevation, angle of depression, and also angle of inclination. So if an observer is looking at an object, then the line from the eye of the observer to the object is called the line of sight. So you have this observer, if the person's looking at an object, that's called the line of sight, or if the person's looking below them, that's still called the line of sight at the object. 
If the object is being observed is above the horizontal, then the angle between the line of sight and the horizontal is called the angle of elevation. So in this left figure, notice that the person is looking up above the horizontal, and so this is called the angle of elevation above the horizontal to the line of sight. However, if the object is below the horizontal, then the angle between the line of sight and the horizontal is called an angle of depression. And so the person is looking below them, and so from the horizontal, you have the line of sight is below, so that would be an angle of theta that's called an angle of depression. If the line of sight follows a physical object, such as an inclined plane or a hillside, we use the terminology angle of inclination. So let's take a look at example five. Survey distance. A surveyor can measure the width of a river by setting up a transit at a point B on one side of the river and taking a sighting of a point A on the other side of the river. So after turning through an angle of 90 degrees at point C, the surveyor walks a distance of 300 meters to point B. Using the transit at point B, the angle theta is measured to be found to be 25 degrees. So the surveyor at point C finds out this point, that's point A on the other side of the river, then walks 300 meters to this point B and determines point A on the other side of the river as well. They walk 300 meters, so this side of the triangle is 300 meters, and they found out that the angle between the horizontal and the line of sight to point A is 25 degrees. So notice that points A, B, and C form a right triangle at point C, so angle C is the right angle. You have angle theta is labeled as 25 degrees, and you have the side A is 300 meters. And so the question is, what is the width of the river rounded to the nearest meter? We're going to find out what is the value of this side B because it represents the width of the river. So notice what information we have in the problem. We have the 300 meters, that's the length of side A, that is the adjacent side to this 25 degree angle. And we're trying to find out what is the width of the river, which is the length of side B. So that is the opposite side from the angle theta. So we need the opposite side and we have the adjacent side length in terms of information in the problem. And we have the angle is 25 degrees. We're talking about tangent of theta because tangent is equal to opposite divided by adjacent in terms of trigonometric ratios. So tangent of theta is opposite divided by adjacent, which in this case, the opposite side of 25 degrees will be B, and then the adjacent side has length 300. So the trigonometric ratio for tangent of theta is b divided by 300. So tangent of theta is b divided by 300, and if you multiply both sides of the equation by 300, you can isolate b on one side of the equation. And so you'll have b is equal to 300 times tangent of theta. Well, theta was 25 degrees. So tangent of 25 degrees is b divided by 300, or b is equal to tangent of 25 degrees times 300. So now we're going to use the scientific or graphing calculator to find out what is the approximate width of the river. So the first thing to do, since we're doing an application problem, is to make sure that your calculator is in the correct angle of measure. So we're talking about 25 degrees for this angle measurement for theta. So make sure that you're in degree mode. So go to mode and scroll down to radians and degrees on that row and convert to degrees. So now second quit, and you want to find out what is 300 times tangent of 25 degrees. 300 times tangent of 25 degrees is approximately 139.892 when you round to three decimal places. So the width of the river is 139.892 meters in width. Or for rounding to the nearest meter, the river will be a width of 140 meters. So let's finish up with one more example. Example six, a problem involving right triangles. From a point on the ground 500 feet from the base of a building, an observer finds the angle of elevation to the top of the building is 24 degrees, and the angle of elevation to the top of the flagpole atop the building is 27 degrees. So notice you have this observer, and they're looking at the top of the building, and they're also looking at the top of the flagpole, and they actually determine that the top of the building, the angle of elevation, is 24 degrees, but if they're looking at the top of the flagpole, that angle of elevation is 27 degrees. We're going to find the height of the building and also the length of the flagpole. Round your answers to the nearest whole number feet. So since the person is 500 feet from the base of the building, we actually can find out the height of the building using the tangent function. 24 degrees is the measure of this angle to the top of the building. And so we're trying to find out what is the height of the building. That would be the opposite side from 24 degrees. And we also have the adjacent side, which is 500 feet. So if we use tangent of theta or tangent of 24 degrees, it will be equal to, if we call the height of the building h, it will be h divided by 500 feet. And then we can do the, exactly the same thing for the height of the flagpole. So if the person is 500 feet from the base of the building and the flagpole's at the top of the building, if it forms a 27 degree angle to the top of the flagpole or the angle of elevation, if we call k the height of the flagpole to the ground, then we actually can talk about the opposite side of 27 degrees is k, and we have the adjacent side is still 500 feet. So notice that the length of the flagpole is actually k subtract h. 
It's the difference between the height of the flagpole to the ground and the height of the building to the ground. So it's just the subtraction or the difference between K and H. Where K is the distance from the ground to the top of the flagpole, which is in feet, and H is the distance from the ground to the top of the building, which is also in feet. So since we're talking about the opposite side of each of these angles, 24 degrees and also 27 degrees, and we have the adjacent side 500 feet, we're going to use the tangent function because the trigonometric ratio for tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. So tangent of theta is opposite divided by adjacent. Let's talk about the 24 degree angle first. So tangent of 24 degrees, so we're using the 24 degrees, which is forming the top of the building, the angle of elevation. This tangent of 24 degrees would be the opposite side, which is the height of the building, h, divided by the adjacent side, which has length 500. So it would be tangent 24 degrees is equal to h divided by 500. And again, if you multiply both sides of the equation by 500, you can isolate the h on one side of the equation. So h is equal to 500 times tangent of 24 degrees. And again, we're going to use a scientific or graphing calculator to find out what is the approximate height of the building. So again, make sure that your calculator is actually in degrees because we're going to input 24 degrees into the tangent function. So go to mode first and notice that we're in radians, so we need to convert to degrees. So change to degree mode, and then second quit, we want to evaluate what is the height of the building, which is equal to 500 times tangent of 24 degrees. So 500 times tangent of 24, which is 24 degrees, is approximately 222.614 feet when you round to three decimal places. So notice that the height of the building to the nearest foot would actually be 223 feet. So the height of the building is about 223 feet from the ground. So now if we want to find out the height of the flagpole from the ground, we can approach this in the same way. We can actually use the trigonometric ratio for tangent again. Tangent of theta is opposite divided by adjacent, but this time we're going to look at the 27 degree angle of elevation to the top of the flagpole. And so tangent of 27 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is k for the top of the flagpole to the ground, divided by 500, which is the adjacent side. So again, if you want to get k by itself, you can multiply both sides of the equation by 500. And so k is equal to 500 times tangent of 27 degrees. And since we're already in degree mode, we can do 500 times tangent of 27 degrees, close parenthesis on the tangent function, and it's approximately 254.763 when you round to three decimal places feet. And if you're rounding to the nearest foot, it'd be 255 feet from the top of the flagpole to the ground. So since we know the top of the flagpole to the ground and also the top of the building to the ground, we actually can find out the height of the flagpole by taking the difference of the two answers. So therefore, the height of the building is about 223 feet. We found that out earlier. And the length of the flagpole is the difference between H and K. And so if you take K, which is 254.763 feet, and subtract the height of the building, which was about 222.614 feet, you find out that the difference between the flagpole's height from the ground and the height of the building to the ground it's about 32.149 feet, or if you're round to the nearest foot, it would actually be 32 feet. So the length of the flagpole is about 32 feet. So this finishes our video on applications of trigonometry using right triangles. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about trigonometric functions of angles.